Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can mask unused body parts when you're rigging your character with AccuRig. I'm going to go through a few cases involving things like character models holding accessories, weapons, or even a child. Please check out the Getting Started tutorial for AccuRig if you're not familiar with the basics first. Okay, let's look first at this pirate character with a hook and a peg leg. The challenge here is that neither the hook nor the peg leg should behave like their organic counterparts, so we need to mask them. This way, they will not be bound to the skin weight when the bones are generated. It's a simple process, really. We can start by selecting the joint marker over the hook hand and simply going over to activate the mask option on the right. You'll see the marker turn gray. On the peg leg, if I select the joint marker further up in the hierarchy and activate the mask, it will also mask any child markers as well. If we proceed to the hand rigging step, you'll see that the markers are messed up due to the wrong number of fingers being defined. If we switch the finger number to 3 from the drop down, you'll see it will resolve the issue. On the left hand, you'll just get a notification that the left side has been masked, so you can proceed to finalize the character and apply some test motions to see the result. You can see that only the hand with the fingers can bend, while the hook is frozen. The peg leg will also not have the flex that is present with knee and ankle joints. Ok, so what if your character has a mesh where it's holding a weapon like in this case here? Since the hand and sword mesh are connected, we don't necessarily need the fingers on that hand to release the sword. As such, we'll just go ahead and mask that wrist joint marker. Again, proceeding to the hand rigging step, we'll see that the right hand has been masked. Since the left hand has the conventional number of fingers, it will be mapped properly. Again, once you finalize your character, you can test out the animation. The issue that presents itself here though, is that the sword goes through the character's leg with the walking animation. You can adjust this in iClone, but if you want to, you can also use the pose offset to rotate the position of the character's hand so that it's facing more forward. This will prevent the sword from cutting through the leg mesh, at least for the walking animation. Ok, this last scenario with the mother holding the child may seem a bit overwhelming, but we can actually rig it to be compatible with a lot of basic motions. In this case, we only want to rig the lower part of the character, and the red area is all going to act as a single character mesh. So what I'm going to do first, is move all of the upper body joints for the shoulders and arms to the side. From there, I'll set up the hip and lower body markers in the appropriate areas so that our character's legs will function normally, and ensure that I mask out the rest of the upper body as well as the arms. We do this so that basically anything from the base of the child's spine will essentially not curve or conform to any motions, and follow the alignment of the mother's hip. Obviously we don't have any hands mapped here, so let's move on to the test motion phase. Here you can see that the model performs fairly well in a number of basic test motions, and it almost appears as though you have two separate meshes. Naturally in this particular scenario, you won't be able to separately animate the character heads as they haven't been defined as separate meshes from the get go, but it can be very useful for background characters in architectural pre-visualization or background NPC characters. That's about all there is to this video guys, hopefully you learned a lot, and be sure to check out our other accurate tutorials for more tips and tricks on this useful tool. I'll see you in the next video.